In today's video, I show you how to install and configure Audio Bookshelf. What is Audio Bookshelf? It's an open source, self-hosted media server for your audiobooks and podcasts with an easy to use app on both Android and iOS. Today, I'll show you how to get it installed and configured so that you can enjoy your audiobooks and podcasts while you're out and about. Let's get Audio Bookshelf set up. Before we get started, if you haven't joined our Discord server yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with some like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. On to the installation. First, we're going to need a location for audiobooks and our podcasts. I already have a media share set up for my audiobooks. I'll use that location. If you don't have one, let's set that up first. First thing we're going to do is go to shares. Then you'd go to add share. We're going to put in a share name here. We're going to call it data. Then the location, you can just put in location for data. Primary storage is going to be a cache. And the secondary, we're going to set to array. And then the move action, we're going to have it go from the cache to the array. Then you hit add share. And then we're going to scroll down to SMB security settings. And we're going to set export to yes. Then we'll click done. Then you're going to browse your data share. And under data, you open up that and create a subfolder in there called media. We're also going to need one for torrents and for Usenet, if you're going for the trash guides folder structure, that is. Open up the media folder and create another subfolder named audiobooks and another called podcasts. And we're good there, so let's minimize that. Let's go back to Unraid and we will click on apps. And we're going to search here for audio bookshelf. Find audio bookshelf in the list here and click install. The network type we're going to change to our custom network. So I'm going to choose my custom alien proxy network. And if you haven't seen a video on how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description to a, a video that I've done and tells you how to do that. This first section here, audiobooks, we're going to need to change this path here. So let's go over to edit. Audiobooks, we're going to change that to data. And then the path, we're going to get rid of the audiobooks. And we're going to change that to slash data, just like that. Then we're going to hit save. And now we're going to browse to our data location. So now with this updated path, we need to select our data share. So go ahead and click into there. And we're going to look for data. And it should be slash MNT slash user slash data. We'll go ahead and click off there next. We've got our data location set. So let's jump down to the config. And under config, we've got slash MNT slash user slash app data slash audio bookshelf. And that's, that's fine. So we can move on. Then metadata. Once again, that one's all set as well. That's fine. The web UI port. We need to expand show Docker allocations. If you scroll down, you can expand it down there. Show Docker allocations. Then we're going to search for this web UI port to make sure that it's free. So we'll double click on that number and I'm going to hit control F on the keyboard and it shows one result, which is right there. So it's not being used by anything. That one's good. We can go ahead and minimize show Docker allocations and hit apply. And while that's installing, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a monthly publication with unraid news, written out guides and more. Sign up now so you don't miss out. All right, we're all installed here. So we'll go ahead and click done. All right, now on to setup and use. Let's go over to our Docker tab. We'll find audio bookshelf in the list here. We're going to click on the icon and select web UI. All right, the initial server setup window. We need to create a root user and password. So the username is root password. Just set it to you know, whatever you use. My super secret password I'll use in here. And then we're going to hit submit. All right, so for username, we're just going to log in now. Put in your username and your super secret password. On the next window, it wants us to add our first library. So I'm going to click on add your first library. And the first library we're going to create is for audiobooks, so we'll leave it on media type for books, but you can also select podcasts. We'll do that next. For library name, let's call it audiobooks. The icon's not too pleasing, so let's make that a little more fun here. How about this little book with a pair of headphones? In the metadata provider, we've got different options in here. I'll just leave it on Google Books, but you can do Audible or iTunes or whatever you'd like. We're going to browse to our audiobook folder now. So we'll click browse for folder, go to data, media, then audiobooks. We'll hit select folder path and then hit create. Now let's go ahead and create a new library. So for media type, we're going to go to podcasts and then the folder name here, let's call this podcast. Let's change this icon. So we will select, oh, let's see here, a little microphone. That sounds good. iTunes looks like it's the only metadata provider. So we'll choose iTunes. And I'm going to browse for a folder location for our podcasts, which once again is under data, media, and then podcasts. And we're good there. So let's go ahead and hit create. 
If you've already got some pre-existing audiobooks, then you're going to find your audiobooks library and you're going to hit scan. And that should go through and look for audiobooks and get them all into the system for you. Currently, right now, we are in the configuration side of it. So if you go up to audio bookshelf, click on either the words or the icon, either one will take you back to its, its main homepage. And here, it'll show you the recently added and discoverable content. And it also shows you the books that are in progress if you have one that's already been started. In library, it shows you your complete audiobook collection. And under series, it'll show you book series that you have. I only have two books in here right now, so I don't have any series. But if you did, they'd show up here. And then collections. Collections are a way of grouping books, such as like creating a playlist. So you can have a mix and match of different books or different you know, podcasts if you're in the podcast section. And then you can share that collection with your friends or family or yourself, however you'd like to. Down to authors, it shows you a list of all the authors that you have in your library. And the narrators, it's once again, shows you the narrators for the books that you've got. And then under stats, it shows you the stats of your collection. So right now I've got two items in the library, 22 overall hours. I've got two authors taking up 655 and a half megabytes and 149 audio tracks. My top five genres are audiobook, top 10 authors, largest items, longest hour items. It's kind of some neat stuff. So if we go back to our library, we can select a library. Let's say a Da DaVinci Code here, and you hit play, and it'll start Books playing. Books on Tape presents The Da Vinci Code. Now if we go back to our home screen, you notice that there's the covers and the, the information on the books, no authors, whatever, are kind of blah, plain looking. So let's click on the little pencil icon. We'll go down to the bottom where it says Quick Match. We'll press that, and it should go out and find the information on the book. And then we can hit Save and Close. Now you see it's got a nice cover. If we go into it, I'll have some more information on it now. The author, publishing year, publisher, all that kind of stuff, read by Paul Michael. So let's go back and clean up the next one. So we'll go back to our library and we'll go to good to great, click on the little pencil icon, do a quick match. And this one's got a bit bigger description in it. So if we go to that now, you'll see a lot better description here. Going back to our library, you can also click on the pencil icon again, and then you can just Go to the cover here. You can upload a cover. You can select which provider you want it to look for. You can look at the chapters, edit the chapters, start intro times, names, all that stuff. The different files. You can match it here. So if you're like, yeah, that's not quite the right book. Let's say you had the young adult adaption of it. You could select that. And then under tools, you've got to make M4B an audiobook file. And then you can also embed metadata. So I'm good there. Let's go ahead and just hit save. Get back out of that. Oh, save and close. There we go. Good to great. I'll close the player. All right, let's go up to settings here, the little gear icon or the cogwheel up in the top right. Then under the general section here, we have the option to store covers with the item, which I kind of like to do because it keeps it out of the app data folder. So I'll turn that on and then store metadata with the item. Once again, I'll turn that on. Ignore prefixes uh, when sorting, Chromecast support. There's you know, lots of different options here. Date format, time format. Once you're done with your selections there, let's go over to libraries. You can add an additional library here if you'd like. You just click add library, do the same thing. Let's say you have another audiobook location. You can browse to that, name it, whatever you'd like, different icon if you'd like, whatever you'd like. Same process. Let's go down to users. To create a new user, we'll go up to add user then put in the username here. And I'll just put in me and my super secret password. Put in my email. Uh, Sure, that sounds good. Account type, we're going to say that I'm just a regular user. Enabled. Then under permissions, you'll set the user permissions and the default setup for users is, is fine, I think. So I'm just going to hit submit. Now let's go over to listening sessions. Here it shows you the history of books and, and stuff you've listened to. So it shows you all the time that you've spent there, what's been listened to, who is listening to it. It's kind of neat. You can see how much it's actually being used. We'll go down to backups next. Here you can enable backups. You can do automatic backups or you can just do a manual backup. And if you have a backup, then you can restore a backup here as well, which is kind of nice. And the rest of the stuff is just normal stuff, you know, logs, that's all the logs for it. If you want to set up notifications, you, you put in the AppRise API key there. Email, you set up your email settings so that if your e-reader supports emailing audiobooks, then you can set up the email settings here. So you can email the audio file right to your e-reader. Metadata, utilities, RSS feeds, authentication stuff. It's just normal, normal stuff. All right, let's go back to our, our home here. We're going to switch over to podcast. So where it says audiobooks up here, select that. And then you can drop down and select your other library you created. 
Once again, if you already have some in there, you can just do scan library. I don't have any in there. If you don't already have any podcasts in here, you can go ahead and have audio bookshelf add one in there. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see add. Go ahead and click on that. Then it gives you an option to search for a podcast or to search for an RSS feed. So we'll give uh, Dusty Porter some love and we're going to search for his channel, which is YouTube Creators Hub. You hit submit and it goes out, looks for it. It's found it here. You click on it, make sure it's all right. URL feed is good. Gives you all the details on it. Make sure it goes to the location you want. Down here at the bottom, the folder, we're going to change that to our podcast location. That looks all correct now, so we can have it auto-download episodes. Then you hit submit. Currently, there are zero episodes downloaded. So to get the episodes, what we would do is find the magnifying glass here for find episodes. You select that. It'll go out and find the episodes. And you can just do select all episodes, or if you just want to do you know one or two, you can search through the list, select whatever you would like, and then you hit download. And now you'll see that the episodes show up below. Once again, same thing. You just find the episode you want, hit play, and it goes. Welcome to the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. If we go back to home now, you'll see that the episodes are listed here and they're recently added. If we close out the player here, let's switch back to podcast. Excuse me, let's switch to audiobooks. You'll see now that this one says that it's continue listening. So we started listening to it. Go over to podcast, do the same thing. Oh, apparently we didn't get far enough in there. It will pop up at the top and say, you know, continue listening. Audio Bookshelf has both Android and iOS apps available for you to use to enjoy your content on the go. However, the iOS version is still in beta, so you have to use the test flight. I'll leave a link to the apps in the description. If you found this video helpful, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one.